Right guys, I'm going to be taking you through my upper body workout to get absolutely jacked and stacked. I'm also going to be elaborating on the fact that my arms, I've actually noticed, are a more dominant part of my physique. And you could actually say I have an arm dominant physique, but I don't know is that going too far. And I'm going to get into why that is now. But I'll start off by saying it's actually very rare to see a natural lifter with an arm dominant physique. Most natural lifters be moving with a power lifter physique, where they kind of look like a spider or maybe like do that like square person who was like a cartoon or some shit. The main point is that most natural lifters have very lagging arms and often the reason that this is, is people will say that they have torso dominance and it's actually genetics. However, this is complete BS. It comes down to the way natural lifters tend to train. You'll see it throughout the workout and I'll talk about it later on in this video as well, but I do have a higher priority on my arms compared to other muscle groups and that's to compensate for the lack of arm training I used to actually do. Firstly, I'll get into the workout we're doing just now and we're starting off with some pause feet up football bar bench press. This is the first time I've actually used this specialty bar and it is harder than it looks. It kind of wobbles a bit because of the way your hands are placed so you need to control it and it's a bit harder but I will eventually get used to it. We are finally able to do weighted chin-ups after many, many months. The weighted pull-ups, weighted chin-up grind is back my arm is feeling better i'd say it's about 95 percent better and we're going to be getting that insane pull-up strength along with these two exercises i'm actually supersetting calves as well so it's actually a giant set i did forget to film the calves i always forget to film the calves but i will say now my calves are actually making absolutely insane gains from doing nucleus overload and just giant setting them in my workouts which is actually insane i might make a video on this now you will see i am kind of struggling to control the football bar as it wobbles a bit this means you actually have to have a slower tempo to make sure you're not like falling over the place also if you do fail on a football bar bench i don't know how you survive that without a spotter because a regular bar you can just roll that shit off but how are you supposed to roll off like a square bar? I'm actually so hyped that I'm able to do weighted chin-ups now and it won't be long before I'll be able to do weighted regular pull-ups and we're going to be getting that pull-up strength. I think I might have said this before, but I want to be the absolute like, strongest human at weighted pull-ups. It's my absolute favorite exercise. It's made all of my back gains, so I'm so happy that we're able to do this exercise again. For the football bar bench press, we're actually keeping reps in reserve, which is completely unheard of for my type of training, but when it comes to new exercises, I tend to do this just to make sure that I'm learning the movement and I'm not like ego lifting or getting injured because I'm not used to the exercise, so we did four sets of five on that. Next, we're moving on to some Helms row superset with some incline bench. Because I like the Helms row so much, we're actually doing four sets on this exercise compared to what I used to do, which was not as much as this. We're going to drop a little spicy hot take here, but I'm going to go out and say that the dumbbell Helms row is the best chest supported row variation. Now, don't come at me if you disagree with that, but I'm just going to drop that in there. Next, as I said, we're supersetting the incline dumbbell bench. We are using different form though where i'm kind of turning the dumbbells out a lot more to get more range of motion i'm trying to get as much range of motion as possible especially because once the dumbbells get bigger you really are cutting the range of motion very very short and the whole point of using dumbbells is to get the converging effect along with more range of motion so when doing this you don't want to let your ego get ahead of you and you should try to get as much range of motion on that exercise as possible i'll bring up a point here about how my arms have actually gotten bigger and that is actually because i superset and giant set a lot of my exercises it gives me more time in my workout to absolutely destroy my arms and i'm not as fatigued because if you're spending like two hours one and a half hours in the gym then you move on to your arm training you are absolutely puffed however if it's only not even been one hour and now you're moving on to arms you're completely fine and ready to go biggest crime people commit when it comes to training arms is just throwing it in at the end when they're already tired and you cannot even push any sort of intensity on the exercise you're doing you may even hold reps in reserve if you're holding reps in reserve for arm training it's absolutely unacceptable if you're trying to get your arms bigger for our arm giant set here we're doing some rope push down followed by dumbbell hammer curls followed by some partial rear delt flies for the dumbbell hammer curls we're not going as hard as i would like to 
as my arm is 95% better. And this has kind of been the key exercise in me rehabbing my arm and making it heal, just getting blood flow into that area. So this has been absolutely goaded for healing my injury. I'd say we're probably going about 90% on this exercise. We're not going to complete failure. I've really been enjoying the dumbbell hammer curls recently, especially when doing them unilaterally, one arm at a time. It feels a lot better than doing them together. Now you'll see here, I'm doing some partial rear delt rows. The reason we're doing partials is that I have personally found that partials on rear delts are just so goated when you're doing them for very, very high reps. Rear delt sets ranging from 20 to 30 reps, including partials, has been what has single-handedly grown my rear delts. That has taken my shoulder from looking like half a shoulder to having that round 3d look now i'll show a couple of my sets on the rope push down i'll just mention something here it's quite interesting at the new gym i'm at the cable machine has a lot more weight on it but it's actually a lot lighter compared to the cable machine i used to do on the previous cable machine i do my working sets on around 42 and a half kilos and that was incredibly hard on this i'm able to do pretty much the same reps but on 80 kilos now this means if you're tracking your weights you need to be tracking the machine that you're actually using because if you go to different gyms the machines actually have very different resistance like how can i be moving double the amount of weight on this exercise compared to another machine i'll drop another arm training tip here and is that you don't want to do too many exercises before you start your arm training because as i said you want them to be fresh as then you can make more gains and train harder then you might think well lee you've already done so many exercises you're leaving arms till last now if you actually think about it i've only actually done two exercises per pushing and pulling muscle group this means when i go into biceps and triceps i've actually only done two exercises that are going to fatigue the biceps and triceps therefore i'm actually able to push myself and make gains the problem a lot of people do they will be doing less exercises than me in a workout however when they go into that they've actually done maybe three or four pushing or pulling exercises like imagine going into triceps but you've already done three or four pressing movements your triceps will be absolutely toasted and you won't be able to train them properly the thing i actually done when i was trying to bring up my arms when they were incredibly small is that i made the decision to sacrifice my chest training in order to train more arms now that is a very big sacrifice most people wouldn't be able to do that but you can decide to prioritize your arms a lot more by doing it as your second exercise for example you do one pressing movement and after that you go straight into triceps that way your triceps are going to be getting way more attention and they're actually going to grow the most progress i found when training my arms was when i was only doing one shoulder movement then i went straight into my triceps and they absolutely blew up now i'm at the point where my arms are not lagging anymore and i'm actually able to train them a bit later in the workout however if you are someone with extremely lagging arms i do recommend that you place them very near the front of your workout i'll explain the little giant set we're doing here is absolutely breathable as fuck so maybe you guys would want to try this we're starting off with some barbell lying tricep extensions followed by seated bicep barbell curls i saw some arm wrestler guy doing it i wanted to try it out and let me tell you it's absolutely beautiful and followed by that we're doing some low raises and we're doing that three times you'll see here for the lying barbell tricep extensions you do not want to bring the bar into a bench press position this is a very big mistake i'll see a lot of people do they'll at the top of the rep they'll bring it back in front of their chest and you're in a bench press position that takes all the tension off the tricep you should not be doing that you want to keep your elbows fixed and do the exercise like this. That way, at the top of the movement, your triceps are still under tension. I'll get into the seated barbell curl that I was doing. As this is the first time I've been doing this exercise, and I actually really like it. It's going to be staying in my program. I think it was Larry Wheels. I saw him do it a very long time ago. And bro, you need to try this exercise. It's so good. The major issue with regular straight barbell standing curls is that often I find it shoots a pain down my forearm and I feel a lot of people actually have the same issue 
When doing a partial like this though, I found absolutely zero problems. It also makes it easier to superset with the Lang extension as I don't need to change the weight. Along with that, it just looks cool. It is one of those exercises which just looks cool. Now, you might be looking at this exercise I'm doing now and it doesn't really look that cool. But what is cool is that my rotator cuff is going to be so jacked and stacked that it's literally invincible. My shoulders are already very, very healthy. The last time I've actually had an injury with my shoulder was when I was like 14 or 15. And since then, I've been bulletproofing my shoulders and they are absolutely solid. This exercise is going to take that to an even bigger level. I have been watching the knees over toes guy. That guy's content is actually so underrated. I've taken so many exercises that he's recommended and they're just absolutely goatee. This is called a dumbbell rotator. I think that is the name for it. And it's just going to work on that internal rotation and also just strengthen the rotator cuff. So when you're in these precarious positions, your shoulder will be so strong that you'll just be completely fine. We're supersetting the dumbbell rotators with some finger curls with the dumbbell because these are unilateral movements. I'm taking no rest in between all these exercises as we're kind of getting rest as we're training. The other arm, I do prefer the barbell woman's bar variation that I have shown in the past however it's a bit annoying to set up and I just want to get this workout done so I'm using the dumbbell variation along with my calves I'm trying to train my forearms every single day I'm going to be honest I'm more consistent on the calves compared to the forearms despite that my forearms are actually still making gains because I'm isolating them a lot more at least every two days I am training my forearms, I'm going to try and get that to every single day, which is what I do for my calves, and they're just making absolutely insane gains right now. Unlike usual, I'm actually going to show a physique update. As you know, I've been cutting for a very long time, but because I'm genuinely awful at cutting, this is nothing to do with genetics. I'm just personally really shit at cutting. This has taken way longer than it's meant to. I'm still not at my goal. However, I am making progress. The progress is slow, but we are still making progress. I am a bit leaner from when I started, but a positive side to that is that I've been still making, I've still been making absolutely insane gains, which is always a good thing. But anyway, guys, leave any questions or comments below, and thank you for watching the video.